Let's get educated. That's why we're here, to bring you the stories impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses. It's time for a little education. Well, hello, everyone. I am Katie Patrick, joined by David Fierraz. Hi. <laughs> hello. Hi. He -he. Welcome. He's very excited that you are here today. Yes. Now, as many of you know, our K-12 Classical Online School is enrolling students for this upcoming fall, this year. So what are you waiting for? All you have to do, get some information, is go to freedomforschool.com. You'll get a free, free information packet. That's freedom, F-O-R, school.com. And when you go on the form and you say, hey, yes, we want our kids to go to your school, Freedom Project Academy, you mark educated and you say, hey, Katie and David sent me. Excellent. Now, we have a Virginia mom who is being called out for saying that parents should not have anything to do with their child's curriculum. However, the case she makes is quite interesting. Now, David. Yes. We talked about this woman a month, two months back. It, it all blurs together. <laughs> but she's back with a new video. So let me know. What, what did she say originally? And now what is she saying? Kind of the same thing. Kind of? Only question mark? different words. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Um, anyway, it's a Democrat candidate that the headline said went on a tirade against parents wanting a say in kids' education and you know, I don't think she learned any lesson at all. She, she just doubled down. So mm. she didn't really, I don't know. I guess when you hear things like that, when you're a parent, this makes you go to the school board meetings. Mm -hmm. And this makes you uh, go and approach a teacher and say, oh, wait a minute, what, what, why can't I have a say in what happens in my son or daughter's education? But we've got two different videos, the original video, and then we've got a more recent video of her updated comments. Let's start with this one. I'm sorry, but I've seen some of the parents that live in Virginia. You should not have um, be dictating what your daughter and son's curriculums look like. If you wanna do that, there's a thing called homeschool. Indoctrinate them there, but not in my kid's public school. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay. Oh my goodness. Now she's flipping the table. She's flipping the script a little bit. They're saying the homeschooling, that's what indoctrinates kids, not the government run mm -hmm, mm -hmm. quote education yes. system. Interesting but, flip there, huh, Katie? But she shows that she is for school choice and you can homeschool your children. Yes, that's and, what I and learned from that. And that's a good thing. I like the purple hair. That was there. Yeah. And I like the constant smile, even though she wanted to reach out and strangle people on, on the other this, side of the video. This they is they also often true. do that. They smile and they're just mm -hmm. like wanting to just, just cuss you out, but they're just going to smile and they're going to come off like, oh, I'm, I'm just so nice and patient. I'm a tolerant Democrat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, now, not, this was ahead of the 2021 Virginia governor's race. Yes. Uh, she was a Democratic Virginia House of Delegates candidate there she is jessica anderson delegate for the 71st district um and that's again where you saw she was saying like hey parents you want to indoctrinate you do it at, at home and parents are like okay mm -hmm. um but there's more there's a new video she posted yep there is more um but that's interesting that was for that race and then this resurfaced of the one you just watched with her gritting her teeth smiling with the purple hair uh having t accusing parents of having the audacity to want to have a say in what their uh, kids should be learning the curriculum but before we get to a related story where um the president comes in here they you know they all pretty much agree with the same thing let's see if she rephrased or backtracked on anything that you just saw in that first vi video watch this do you know who didn't have children in public education when I made that video and still doesn't to this day? That would be Governor Glenn Youngkin. See, if he tanks our public education system, defunds it, forces teachers out of the field, it doesn't hurt him and his family because they're safely tucked away at a private institution. So he has no vested interest in our public education being successful, which is why I made this video because I'm clearly pointing out that despite his language about caring about families and public school, he doesn't. Meanwhile, I still have two children in the public education system. I have an active interest in them being successful. 
and their peers being successful. I participate with the PTA. I have communications with their teachers. I go to the school board meetings. In fact, I even organize a Facebook group so that we could have connection between educators and families. I advocate for families being involved in their students' education every day. And despite me working in the front office of a school for the last five years and having a front seat view of how education is functioning, I realize that I am not intellectually sound to be writing the curriculum that is taught to my children. Now, I absolutely support myself and other parents being involved, asking about books, asking about the curriculum, having parent-teacher conferences, attending PTA meetings, going to the school board meetings. This is important. I want you to take an active role in your child's education. But again, you shouldn't be writing the curriculum, and that's what the video was about. Is she speaking out of both sides of her mouth? Katie bit. Patrick, she's your a, thoughts. She's a bit of a politician in this one. Oh, yes. If, 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 if you would have just turned <laughs> that video off immediately after she did this whole, like, well, Glenn Youngkin's kids don't go, they go to private school, so he should have no say. Well, no it's also say. like every other politician whose children go to private schools. And even a lot of yeah. the teachers union heads have their children, if and they even have children, go to yeah. private schools as well. But then she does say things that I completely agree with. Be active in what your kids are doing in schools. Learn about what is happening. She did say she has that front seat in the front office for the last five years, and she's been able to see how education is functioning. And I agree that she didn't quite say this, but everyone on the school board should be a parent of someone in the district. Like they should actually have vested interest in it, not just especially in places like Virginia, like Fairfax. Uh, Loudoun County. Loudoun County, where those people, those school boards are used as stepping stones for political office. A lot of them, it's a, tw a 25 year old on the school board who has no children and is just using this as a stepping stone in political office to keep going up the ladder because that is truly what happens there. And a lot of the school board members don't have kids at all or ever had kids. So when we talk about vested interest to circle back to what she said at the beginning of that about Glenn Youngkin, having vested interest is important. So I agree with her that you need to pay attention to what's happening. You should have vested interest and that will help your school district out ultimately. But how she talks both sides of her mouth, eh, yeah. it goes back on it. Yeah, first of all, two things before we move on. Uh, I'll give Katie the last word on this. But remember Joe Biden recently said, there's no such thing as someone else's child while honoring the National Teacher of the Year. Mm. So they're the government's children. It's everybody's children. It's not just yours. And then going back to that woman's purple-haired original. By the way, the the oh, more updated video. Yeah. She got black nail polish, purple nail polish, black hair, blonde hair. Anyway, um, attention to detail. But she said in the original video, "I'm sorry, but I've seen some of the parents that live in Virginia." Ooh, Stop. Zinger. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe those that are maybe out in the country, that are out in, the, out in the, the rural areas, she's not too thrilled with. But she said, you should not be dictating what your daughter and son's curriculum looks like. That's what she originally said. And in the updated video, she says, all right, yes, parents should be involved in blah, 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 blah. Ka uh, you know, Katie, your thoughts. Interpretation of blah, 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 blah. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Um, you brought up Joe Biden. <laughs> How did he do? Sorry. Being vested in his own children's education. How are his kids doing? Where's Hunter? All right, anyway. Still to come, an elementary teacher, <laughs> see what I did there, in Massachusetts is in a bit of trouble after a nine-year-old student found one of her marijuana gummies and ate it. More on that and the mixed opinions from residents next. Today's episode is brought to you by Freedom Project Academy. Looking for a K-12 classical online school built on Judeo-Christian values? FPA is enrolling now for the fall. Request your free information packet at freedomforschool.com. That's freedom, F-O-R, school.com. FYI, PSA, all of the things. David, yes. do not bring your edibles into the classroom edibles like yes your edibles protein bars 
if they have certain drugs in them, yes, those. Okay. Okay. Now, this shouldn't be hard to understand why you wouldn't bring edibles in, in the marijuana kind into a classroom, but here we are. Uh, we have, uh, is it Hobomock <laughs> Elementary School? Yes. In Pembroke, Massachusetts. Elementary school. Elementary school. Well, <sighs> well. Why we, should that surprise anybody? Why? Why does it even matter, right? Uh, well, yes, we have an, a, a paraprofessional who was put on administrative leave after uh, apparently, allegedly, bringing a pouch of marijuana edibles to school in a backpack. And then a nine-year-old, being apparently a nine-year-old, infiltrated the bag and accessed the uh, mind-altering substance. <laughs> In Pembroke, it's what parents are talking about. How a nine-year-old Habamock Elementary student got their hands on a piece of marijuana edible. This dad has a young son at Habamock Elementary, too. Hopefully it doesn't happen again and you trust on the people that you send your kids to school with to do their job. The superintendent says a paraprofessional brought a backpack into the classroom with a cannabis product. Parents tell us the boy opened the male staffer's backpack and took the edible. The child was rushed to the hospital to be checked out and is expected to be okay. It's really hard because you want to bring your kids to a school where you feel safe. The staffer is now on administrative leave. While marijuana is legal in Massachusetts, officials say under the drug-free workplace policy, having or using controlled substances and alcohol at schools is strictly prohibited. In a letter to parents, the school district said, we deeply remain committed to protecting all our students and staff and maintaining safe, healthy learning environments. Wait a minute, Katie. Did they show a picture of Joe Biden when they said marijuana was legal in Massachusetts <laughs> they at may that have same had, moment? Have an, ha, ha, may have had an image up of the uh, Joseph Biden. The presiding puppet. Yeah, we go. Puppet so, president. This is an interesting one in that. There oh, is. there it is. Oh, oh, good. Look at we got He's on the bottom there. We got Roosevelt as well. Well, the Roosevelt as well. Why not? Um, Massachusetts. Uh, you know, for us, it's out west. When we're talking about Colorado and all those other states, California, all that. I wonder how often this actually happens. And now it's just old news with a lot of. You mean these bringing schools. yeah, like bringing to school well, yeah, bring, well, bringing edibles and yeah. a kid accidentally having it, like be, it is much more accessible, yeah, these days. But it is interesting to note. Now, obviously, it's like you don't have to pick sides or anything, but the nine-year-olds at fault as well. Considering why are you going into a, a teacher's and adults or anyone else's private things? It's not like the edible was on the desk, and even if it was on the desk, you don't touch anything on the teacher's desk. Yeah, but, nobody really mentioned that. It said infiltrated the bag and accessed it. Like, would, in other words, stealing, stealing, would that or be... you know, digging in someone else's stuff. Like, isn't the, there's that component too? I guess, but I'm I'm, I'm <laughs> happy to see the the kids doing okay at least, right? Hopefully, not gateway to something else. Yeah. Yes. Well, coming up, we have a middle school teacher in Virginia now who is suspended after telling a student to stop speaking Spanish in class. Yeah, this will this will get interesting. Today's show is sponsored by our friends at My Pillow. Save up to sixty six percent on pristine quality bedding, towels, slippers, signature pillows, and much more when you use the code Educated. That's E D U C A T E D educated support this show and a great american company no habla espanol that's about the amount of spanish i know really yeah i took german okay sprechen sie deutsch yeah no nine Okay. Well, we have a middle school teacher who has been suspended after she allegedly chastised a sixth grade student for speaking Spanish and actually told her to speak only English going forward. Now, this happened in late April where we have a Spanish speaking radio station in Richmond, Virginia, who shared an audio clip which seemed to show a teacher at Bushal Middle School firmly asked a student to speak English only like right? when you're in her classroom you speak english only it's good. and and according to the unidentified teacher that was heard on the recording it said english is spoken in this class period Whew. 
That's kind of aggressive to say. Period. Period. Uh, what was say, the context? What was the context? Well, the girl who claims that Spanish is her native language had told news reporters after the fact that she had been joking in Spanish with a friend when the teacher scolded her. And so uh, basically one of the comments that was made was saying that, right, well, go back to wherever that Spanish-speaking country is and speak it. This is what the teacher is saying. <laughs> the teacher supposedly said, when you in America, you gonna speak English in the class that are spoken here. This is, again, according to the audio recording. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> but usually you, you, you can hear it. So, yeah. One after another, people took to podium at the Richmond School Board meeting, each one demanding answers and accountability over a recent incident at Bouchard Middle School. A sixth grader told by her teacher to stop speaking Spanish in her classroom. I told one of my friends, oh, you don't have friends in Spanish because we joke around like that. And that teacher just started yelling at me, telling me I couldn't speak Spanish. Video of that incident was posted online last week. In a transcript passed out to the school board, the teacher tells the student her mother can come to her classroom and, quote, I'll speak English when I see her. The teacher goes on to say she's going to speak English too, period, and says the student's mom does not own the world. The student replies back saying I didn't say she owned the world, and the teacher tells the student it's very ignorant of you to throw up your mom as if it's going to change my rules in my class. English is spoken in this class, period. She just kept saying that it just wasn't allowed in here in America. You speak English and that if I wanted to speak Spanish, then to go to whatever that Spanish-speaking country is. The teacher later tells the student, quote, I told you before, I don't speak Spanish. The school board is aware of that. That's why there are Spanish-speaking classes for the kids who need a Spanish class. After more back and forth between the student and teacher, the teacher allegedly tells the student to shut up before telling the student to leave the class. Shut up talking. That the teacher said, "Shut up talking." According to that, there is a, a there is a Spanish expression I remember. Oh, in boca cerrada no entran moscas. It means in a closed mouth no flies enter. Mm. So maybe she shouldn't have been speaking in class. But it's interesting. She was <laughs> told you can speak it at home with your mama and your dad. Oh yeah, that is yep. Uh huh. Yep. Now the teacher. You know, and you kind of heard about how you can s s say in the speak it at home part, but part of that transcript said, you got kids who speak French, you got kids who speak Russian, and yet all students are expected to speak English at school, no matter which language is spoken True. at home, according to the teacher, right? And then the teacher is actually quoted saying, you speak Spanish at home, baby, with your mama and your dad yeah. and whoever else is there. So now this teacher, unidentified, <laughs> is... Uh, suspended we'll see what happens and you saw it was a the may school board meeting where uh the mother of the girl who was embroiled in this whole controversy attended it to express her outrage and it is sad to hear that when the mom says the day this happened my daughter came home and locked herself in her room and wouldn't stop crying um and the mom said this in spanish and she said that we as parents have to be willing to defend our children i agree wholeheartedly with that we as parents need to be defend our children yes but but here's the question was it right what the teacher did in the way she did it? Mm -hmm. Could she be right that she did it, but just in the wrong way? Thoughts, feelings, well, understandings? Yeah, everybody speaks English in the classrooms if this, in these schools. But interesting, yeah, you have to be willing to defend your children. But are you defending your children when it comes to the transgender ideology that they're shoving down kids' throats in sex ed or health or whatever, social studies, math class, history, every subject but the other thing is and I'll, I'll let you finish up you saw a picture of former president barack hussein obama there that was colorized and made him look like an icon a hero in the previous story we did there were the democrat presidents uh, biden and i think the roosevelt and whatever um i actually had a teacher friend who was told to remove a picture from his wall of ronald reagan so get that down get all republicans out but you're allowed to Anyway, just an observation I made that is totally irrelevant from the story, but disturbing to me nonetheless. Hmm. There's a little quink quink dink if you will, with it, maybe. Well, anyway. It's just fun, the two stories in a row, we, it, they, it they is saw pretty, the pictures. This is how the news operates, basically. Now, still to come, we have a 17-year-old in Arizona who's setting the bar pretty high for his fellow peers, as he's not only 
going to earn his high school diploma, right? We're in, we're in graduation season here. But he's also graduating with three college degrees as well. We're going to meet this little brainiac next. If you have a smartphone, tablet, Roku, or Apple TV, consider downloading the Freedom Project media app. It's 100% free and includes all of our weekly shows, plus lecture series, archive programs, and award-winning animated videos for families like the Presidential Minute, Battles of America, and Heroes of the West. Don't rely on the social media giants to keep you informed. Simply download the Freedom Project media app from your app store and allow notifications. And we'll let you know when a new video is ready. So, Katie Patrick, I believe yes. it was Fisher Ames who went to college at 12 years old. And I think he graduated from Harvard, ah. if I remember right, at 16. 15 or 16, something 15 around there. 15 or 16. Now, we've got a 17-year-old set to graduate with three college deg degrees, not to be outdone by Fisher Ames, the <laughs> author of the First Amendment of the Constitution. This young man, three college degrees along with his high school diploma. This youngster is in Arizona. And he's getting ready to graduate this spring. And uh, his name is Tristan Andrade. And I started talking or taking, I'm sorry, online college courses when he was in sixth grade. Online college courses. That's pretty cool. Sixth grade. Yeah. Back in sixth grade, our internet wasn't really a thing. We couldn't take on <laughs> anything quite yet. It was kind of there, but not really. That's right. But uh, yeah, this is a pretty cool, <coughs> excuse me, pretty cool story. And to, he, he did it right. He did it economically because you get uh, those college degrees without having to pay for it like you would after the fact. So mm. let's take a look. Oh, say can you see A beautiful voice that stops you in your tracks. A 17-year-old with an incredible so story. I'm going to be graduating with an associate in artificial intelligence, computer science, and mathematics. Tristan Andrade is doing big things. He first started taking college classes when he was in sixth grade. And by the time he was in eighth, he dual enrolled through Australia Mountain Community College. He dual enrolled, homeschooled which allows me to pursue both my high school diploma and my college degrees at the same time. This is just the beginning. I want to be an AI engineer. Next stop, ASU, to pursue that career path further. Brainiacs. <laughs> Katie Petrick, did he say he was homeschooled and that allowed him to pursue these degrees? Did I hear that correctly? Well, it said it's like along the lines, like as homeschool. I thought I heard him say that. Yeah, it sounded, he said something with homeschool. Because how could he have the time to do all this online Well, when he was in, anyway. Great, great yeah. question. Either way, Either the way. fact that you're 17, <laughs> 17 years old, Yeah, he's got three associate's degrees, essentially. Uh, it, it's a, quite an interesting story, and again, a smart way to do it, since he didn't have to then pay for it uh, as much as you would. So it's kind of like uh, buy one, get three free, although he obviously did a lot of work in, in uh to getting those degrees and the fact that he's continuing on he knows what he wants to do and so that's a, a smart yeah. way to do it he's headed to arizona state university and for other young students looking to follow in his steps here's his advice he strongly recommends taking high school and college courses concurrently to get a head start and save time and money katie what's concurrently at the same time same time concurrent that's yeah. what i thought you're you didn't get did you even get one degree there david Ooh, I, burn ooh. He got, this guy got basically four degrees, three college and high school. Anyway, if you uh, like what you just saw here, or even if you didn't, if you could just do your thing and maybe like this video, subscribe, share, all the fun things, comment, you know, all of it. We'd appreciate it very much so. And send us your feedback. We'd like that too. Now for David and myself, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And thank you for supporting this show. Yes. Until next time. Stay educated.